Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm documenting um, a new project that I'm trying to start up just to see how much effort it's going to be. Um, so it's going to be a Visual Studio extension, Visual Studio Code anyway. And uh, the idea is that I'm building my own extension so that I can interface with Claude, ChatGPT, uh, and whatever other AI providers that I want. And I don't have to pay a third-party service like Cursor in order to do it. And uh, we're going to see how difficult this is. So for starters here, this is my basic um, starter code. I'm calling the project Hawker. Um, yeah, basically Hawker. <laughs> um, so it's uh, an assistant that can use Claude, GPT, or Gemini. And the way this works is when you're running the application, you can press like uh, F5 so far. And this will actually open up an e extension um, and you have basically a separate Visual Studio Code window. And this, you can see it's like the actual extension development. So it's just like an extension environment. Kind of confusing at first, but it is, uh, it is cool. So basically, this is running that extension code that I was just showing you. And that way, I can go ahead and like do something like this and highlight some code and press Control-Shift-P. And I can say Hawker Explain Selected Code. Um, it's going to run most likely error out because I'm early on in development, but let's see. And sure enough here, it's saying that I actually have insufficient quota and it's probably because I just set up an API key and like they have no billing information or anything for me. So I will have to check out those details. Yeah. So that was the situation like your actual cursor, I'm sorry, ChatGPT account isn't going to be the same. If you're doing it from like a business using the API, you have to have a specific uh, resources that you purchase from uh, OpenAI. So I just did that. I, it was like $5 for a million something or another. So hopefully it's enough to test around with. So let's try that again. The question is going to be how many tokens do I have? All right, cool. So it actually works. So this code sets a styles for a container element. The container element will have a maximum width of 1200 pixels. It will be centered on the page with auto margins. Anyway, that's cool. So basically already created a tiny little extension. It communicates directly with ChatGPT. The idea here is um, why pay for cursor or any of these IDEs that are springing up all over the place if you could just simply create your own uh, pretty easily. So that's sort of what I'm evaluating at this point. So one thing I got to say is annoying is that when you're doing Visual Studio extension development, like you'll have your code base here, which is for the extension. And when you make a change, like if I make a change here, um, you, you, there's no hot reloading. So that's basically one of the pain in the asses here. So if I were to add something here like pain in the ass and I press save, so I'm saving the code, even though the code is watching and it's compiling. So I have a watcher running and you can see it's actually running here. So this is running and compiling the extension. And when you view the extension, you open up in this extension Visual Studio. However, there is no hot reloading here. So you can see I don't have that option that I just added. So I could do Control R, which is uh, reloading. And you can see finally I have pain in the ass there. So that is sort of a pain in the ass, but without hacks, um, this is a it, like by, devi by design convention where there's just simply no hot reloading for the Visual Studio Code extension window. And if I'm wrong about that, somebody let me know because that would be helpful. All right, so this thing's coming along a little bit. So I have a little chat bot here. So if I go over here, I can click on my little hawker and I can choose my different chat bots I want to communicate with. In this case, I'm talking to ChatGPT. And one of the interesting things I want to show you is that when I first asked this thing to try to just create a file in the root directory. So this is just a simple basic project. Uh, I asked it to create a file in the root directory and it says, hey, I'm a chatbot, I can't do that. So what Cursor does, and um, it, it basically is creating a, uh, a dialogue with these bots to say, hey, you are a chatbot, you're this helpful thing. And when somebody asks you to do something, you need to act like you, you can do it basically. And, and you're going to return the response of what it is that's being requested in a JSON format. So that way then this code can read the JSON format and actually write files. 
So by default, though, again, you know, ChatGPT and all these other things will say when you're just calling their API like this, hey, I, I can't create a file. I have no I have no ability to do that. So you teach it how to basically communicate with your application in a language that your application can understand uh, and that communication can go back and forth. So again, we're going to use JSON, JavaScript object notation. That's basically the, the main way that all applications on the web communicate. So as an example of that, um, I went ahead and made changes to say, hey, when you're asked to create a file, confirm that, that, you're, that that's what the user wants to do and then go ahead and let them do it. So for instance, I'll be able to say, uh, please create a test.txt file in the root directory of this project. Have the, the file say, hello world. All right, so now it'll actually say, so b again, before, and never mind the styling here, we're not worried about that, but before it would say, I can't do that, and then now it's saying, I can, if you confirm it. So then now you can see it's created the test.txt with the hello world in there. However, if I were to go so to do something like this on the basic bot, and I say, hey, um, please explain, please, um, review this project's code and explain what it's doing. So again, this is an example of the bot going, it's going to respond to say, I don't know how to do this because I need the, the proper paths, the names of the files, all this stuff. So it's like, well, how does cursor do it? And the bottom line is that you give more instructions to say, hey, you have the ability to parse um, when somebody asks you to, to review the project or you need to review the project, have a review task, and that review task will have access to code that can then iterate through all the project files in your directory. So if I go over to this OpenAI provider, you can see that this is where I'm actually telling it. I'm giving it this context. You were Hawker, an expert AI software developer integrated into VS Code, and blah, 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 blah. Right, and then I define these tools that, that it's allowed to do, so proposed file changes and things. So that's actually how that occurred. All right, so I went ahead and I applied a basic RAG system to the Hawker um, chatbot. So basically, what is RAG anyway? Uh, so this retrieval augmentation generation. Uh, so this is, um, I think, somewhat of a difficult concept, but well, not really, actually. Basically, the way that these things work, uh, these RAG systems are built on top of context. So a lot of people talk about context-based programming. Context-based programming, an example of that would be like what I actually told ChatGPT. It's like, hey, you're a hawker. You're a, a bot that can do this and that. Like you're providing context there about what it can and can't do and how it should act and what sort of tone it should uh, talk in. If you wanted it to talk like a surfer bro or something like that, you have that ability. So that's like setting the context. But the RAG system that you hear commonly about is you have the ability to provide basically like you could look at it this way. Like if you were basically you had to hire a brand new programmer, pretend his name is Alex or something like that. He has absolutely no concept of what your application is, right? So he's a great programmer. He knows how to do Python and JavaScript and all this stuff, but he doesn't know anything about the Hawker code base. So the, the problem is, is that when you pretend that Alex is your chatbot, you can't give it the entire code base of the Hawker thing. It would be like having to read thousands of lines of code on every single request. So the LLM has no concept of like what your code base is about. And it's completely inefficient to just simply send your entire code base or have it scan your entire code base every time you ask it a question. So this RAG level, is actually more like a librarian. So the librarian reads all of your code initially and not actually every line, but it'll read things and start basically categorizing things like, oh, this is an authentication system. This is the server side stuff. Uh, these are buttons and components on the UI. And it sort of creates this internal index. And like I said, if it's a librarian, like consider it like the Rolodex or something going old school. But 
that is what the RAG system is doing. So it's actually providing this higher level knowledge of the application at hand. So then if you were to ask a question uh, and ask Alex to do something like, I need you to write, you know, some new, some new component, the question is not going to go to Alex, the programmer first. It's actually going to go to the RAG system, which is the librarian, to say, this is what I'm trying to do. And the librarian is actually going to pinpoint, oh, this is asking about a UI component and then specifically give that information to the LLM, which is Alex in this case. And that way the LLM knows exactly what part of the application it's working on without having to understand the entire thing on that request. All right, so now that we have our basic RAG system in place, let's go ahead and try to test this out. So I'm going to just simply ask it to scan the code base again. So I'm saying, please review this code base and tell me what it is doing. All right, then now that we have the RAG system in place, it says the code base you provided appears to be a simple component library called Vanilla++. It is designed to be to enhance semantic HTML elements with modern styling and functionality, primarily using HTML, blah, 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 blah. So this is going into quite a bit of... Uh, analysis on the code base so that is pretty cool so we added a rag system i'm gonna have some more videos to follow up on this because i'm gonna try to build this out uh, even more so more videos to come in regards to making this better check out my video game i am releasing it towards the end of this year it's pretty much done uh just a few little things here and there and i'm just making improvements and such but i like it it's fun check it out